good morning, everyone. Uh, this is the second showcase of the E4H matchmaking event. Thank you, everyone, for being present. And uh, today we have Vania Guimarães from Fraunhofer, uh, Fraunhofer Portugal Icos. I, I think it's the, the complete name, right? Uh, she will talk about technology for assisted living and uh, using walking speed assessments for personalizing interventions on geriatric giants. Good morning, everyone. So, Vanya, the stage is yours. Feel free. And if anyone in the audience wants to make a question or speak something, just raise your hand and I enable you to, to speak when you make your questions. Okay. Okay. Good morning. Thank you for your kind introduction um, and thank you for the organizers and UPETEC for, for this opportunity of being present here today to showcase some of the technology that uh, we have developed at Front of Portugal like us. Um, and today the, the presentation will be focused on technology for rehabilitation and assessment of older adults based on gait analysis and inertial sensors. Um, so my name is Vanya. Um, I, before, before starting, I would like to give you a little bit uh, of context of my background and dress. Um, and my background is on biomedical engineering from the Faculty of Engineering of the University of Porto. Uh, I'm a researcher uh, from the Intelligent Systems Group at Fraunhofer Portugal ICUS since 2012, so for 10 years. Um, I'm also a PhD student, also on biomedical engineering since 2019. Um, and my research interests currently concern uh, the use of inertial sensors for movement analysis, and in particular for gait analysis. Um, also the use of machine learning for time series analysis. And I have been involved in several projects concerning um, the development of motion tracking solutions um, not only for gait analysis, but also for indoor location, uh, fall prevention, fall risk assessment. Um, so my research interests are also on the development of exert games. So interactive games for uh, geriatric rehabilitation. Um, so using inertial sensors uh, for interaction and also for the evaluation of movement. And finally, uh, using these tools to assess uh, motor performance and cognitive performance in older adults. Um, so in case you want to reach me later on, you can use uh, the email on the slide. Okay, now about our research institution, Fraunhofer Portugal, ICUS. Um, Fraunhofer Portugal is a non-profit private association. Uh, it was founded in 2009. Um, it was founded by Fraunhofer Gesellschaft in Germany. Uh, which is the largest organization of applied research in Europe. Um, Front of our Portugal is also, has also this mission uh, to undertake applied research of direct utility to private and public enterprises and of wide benefit to society. Um, and currently, Front of our Portugal operates two research centers. We have the Front of our Portugal ICUS and Front of our Portugal AVAM. AVAM is uh, our most recent research center. It's the research center for smart agriculture and water management. Uh, and it was created in 2019. ICUS is uh, the research center for assistive information and communication solutions. Uh, it is located in Porto, Portugal. Um, it was born in 2009 uh, following a partnership uh, between Front of Our Society, so Front of Our Gesellschaft, uh, the Foundation for Sciences and Technology, FCT, and the University of Porto. So ICUS has uh, two offices in Portugal uh, and employs around 100 people, of which 80 people are researchers. And at ICUS, we have currently uh, three main competence areas or groups. So we have the human-centered design group, which uh, focuses on the conceptualization, design and evaluation of technology together with people. So using human-centered design approaches, we have the connected things group, which is a group uh, with experience in electronics, telecommunications, software engineering, 
um, and they are mostly addressing the challenges of the Internet of Things, so the IoT. Uh, so um, enabling communication and distributed systems through connected devices. And finally, uh, we have the, the Intelligent Systems Group, uh, which is a group with expertise in areas like signal processing, computer vision, artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, natural language processing. Uh, so basically, we rely on data to unveil hidden patterns um, and support decisions. We have uh, so far participated in several European and national funded projects. And also we have had some uh, direct contracts with industry. Um, and we have been doing research on human motion since the foundation of the research center. So we rely mostly on smartphones and wearables with inertial sensors to evaluate movement. For instance, to automatically recognize activities like walking or running or standing, um, or for the automatic evaluation of and detection of poles using inertial sensors. Also um, to evaluate movement and allow interaction with extra games for uh, geriatric rehabilitation and fall prevention, also using inertial sensors, um, and also the development of indoor tracking uh, solutions based on walking trajectories and also environmental information that is acquired from the smartphones. Today, I would like to present you the project Vital, um, which is related to the topic of healthy aging. Okay, so Vital aims at using walking speed uh, for personalized interventions on geriatric giants. It was funded by the European Commission through the Active Assisted Living Program, um, and it had seven partners in the consortium. So we had uh, Dividat coordinating uh, the project. Um, Dividat, together with ProCare, both from Switzerland, were responsible for defining the business case for the project. Um, then we have a physiotherapy clinic, uh, Physio Spartars, also in, in Switzerland. We also had three universities, um, ETH in Switzerland, the University of Montreal in Canada, and KU Leuven in uh, Belgium. Uh, in this case, ETHD uh, coordinated the, the trials, uh, and the trials were conducted in Canada, Switzerland, and Belgium. And Fraunhofer ICUS was here as an R&D institution. Um, the project started in May 2018 at the duration of three years, um, but we also got um, an extension of six months. So the project was officially closed by the end of October last year. So as I said, the project is related to this topic of the healthy aging. Um, and we know that aging is associated with a gradual decline in physical and cognitive abilities. Um, and the demographic aging of the population, um, more and more older adults are suffering from one of the geriatric giants, like for instance, mobility impairments, cognitive impairments, and urinary incontinence. And because of this, there is an increasing interest in promoting healthy and active aging. Uh, and this can be achieved with Exer Games. So Exer Games combine um, exercise with entertainment uh, and can be used to promote physical activity in older adults. So they can provide simultaneous training for uh, cognitive and motor skills, uh, which are usually affected simultaneously in older adults. And they can also provide personalized training so that the the exercises are adapted to the needs and the capabilities of the person. And usually uh, the gradual decline in physical and cognitive abilities has an impact on gait performance. And for this reason, the project proposes using gait as an indicator of decline um, and considers it like the sixth vital sign, uh, like body temperature or blood pressure. So uh, in this project, we developed an exer game targeting age-related impairments like mobility impairment, cognitive impairment, and urinary incontinence. And to target these conditions, we provided interventions for balance, 
for strength, cognition, pelvic floor muscle training, uh, this last one just for, for women. Uh, and we used gait speed as a simple geriatric assessment to formulate individualized interventions. So gait speed and other assessments defined the training duration of each component of the training. And to evaluate movement, uh, both within the game and also for the gait analysis, we used inertial sensors. Okay, this is the, the architecture of the developed solution. Um, so the Exer game was developed using Unity and was compiled as a web-based tool uh, so that it could be readily accessible in any system without installation. Uh, so the Exor game could connect uh, with Bluetooth devices via the browser. Um, the Exor game was also integrated with a backend, um, a database in connection with a clinician portal. Um, this, this one was developed by Dividat. Um, the background allows, um, the backend, sorry, allows recording session data, uh, like the scores achieved within the game, the training times, um, and the clinician portal allows the clinician to specify the training times for the patient, uh, to perform and record standardized assessments, including the gate analysis. Um, and through the portal, the clinician can also manage patients' profiles and monitor their progress over time. So we use inertial sensors um, on the feet um, for the interaction with the game. And we also uh, use them for gait analysis uh, through the clinician portal. And women with uh, urinary incontinence could also use a dynamometer uh, to monitor their pelvic floor muscle contractions. Uh, and this dynamometer was also integrated uh, in the game. So uh, to play the game, a patient only needs a laptop or a PC uh, needs internet connection and a set of sensors. And also a TV uh, may be used to display the game on, on a larger screen. So in this project, we, we were, front of our Portugal Icos, was responsible for game design and interaction design, um, integrating the wearables in the solution and providing the inertial sensors developing all algorithms for movement evaluation, both in the context of the game and also for uh, the gate analysis. Um, the clinician portal was provided by Dividat and the clinical partners, universities were involved in the, um, the specification of the interventions and also conducting uh, the trials. So um, in a project like this, um, the involvement of end users is crucial in all phases of the project. Um, and in this case, we have uh, three phases in this project. We have the investigation phase, development phase, and then the trials phase. So um, in the investigation phase, we have conducted surveys and focus groups with end users uh, in order to be able to describe their needs and also to define the requirements for the solution. Then in the development phase, we have conducted several usability lab studies uh, with seniors, and we also collected inertial sensor data to be able to develop the algorithms for the automatic analysis of movement. Then the trials uh, were divided in two phases. The first phase, uh, was set to test the usability of the game, and a second phase uh, to assess visibility and intervention efficacy. The trials um, were, of course, also very affected by the COVID-19 pandemic uh, that led to several delays uh, because we were dealing with uh, the target population at higher risk, also because participants were intimidated to, to participate, they were afraid to participate in these research activities. And also because physiotherapists and evaluators were less available uh, because of the pandemic. Sometimes they were sick or they needed to stay at home with their child. So we faced here some, some challenges during the trials. So um, although the project is officially closed, um, some of the partners uh, managed to continue the intervention study 
uh, to try to reach um, the expected number of participants. So as the, this intervention study is still running, uh, we do not have yet the, the final results of the project concerning uh, feasibility and intervention efficacy, uh, but they will be published uh, later on when the, the trial actually finishes. Okay, this is the, um, the exer game that was developed within the project. Um, we included in the game a set of themes that uh, were based on older adult preferences and interests. So these uh, were selected based on the hobbies that were most commonly reported by older adults during the investigation phase. And this is important to ensure um, adherence to, to the game. Uh, so the themes were the nature, the farm, the kitchen, uh, the library and the supermarket. And we also made use of several training principles like feedback, optimal load, progression, variability. Also made use of game design principles such as time constraints, scores, uh, for user engagement and also for entertainment. Um, we had our cartoon uh, called Vita to create some empathy with the, the player um, and it provided feedback on performance uh, and add these very animated expressions. Um, the user interface was designed for large screens, uh, so to be displayed on a TV. Uh, and the interaction was made using the movements of the feet. Uh, you can see also on the slides and pictures of our sessions with seniors uh, that were set to test and validate some of our design decisions. Here uh, you can see some of the interfaces of the, the mini games that we developed. So, in each theme of the game, we had two possible games uh, to choose. Uh, so we had a total of 10 mini games. Uh, here you can see two examples of balanced games, uh, which were called the Mummy Chicken and the Labyrinth game, uh, where the focus was on the execution of multi-directional steps, um, where the, the sequence and the speed of the steps uh, would become more challenging for an optimal progression. Then you can see uh, two examples of cognitive games, uh, the healthy food and the shopping list games. These games are also answered uh, using multi-directional steps. Um, and the cognitive games in general that we had in our, in our platform uh, were focused on attention and executive functions like memory, reaction time, mental flexibility, and inhibition control, uh, which are also crucial uh, to control gates and to walk safely. So for optimal load and uh, the difficulty of these tasks also adapted to the person's abilities. Uh, then you can see here an example of strength training. So in this case, the person needs to follow the movements of the avatar. Um, the movements were recorded using our motion capture system, Viken, uh, that we have available in our motion lab uh, in Porto. Um, the exercises were inspired by Tai Chi movements uh, and were mainly based on squats. So, and they also become increasingly challenging for optimal progression. And finally, we have the, the exercises targeting uh, urinary incontinence, which involves strength, endurance, and coordination training of the pelvic floor muscles. So the game asks to perform pelvic floor muscle contractions uh, according to a predefined intervention. In, in the first stage, the game uh, stops uh, to ask for the pelvic floor muscle contractions, but um, for progression, the pelvic floor muscle training will occur while doing the, the multi-directional steps and answering to, to the game. So also the, the intensity and the number of contractions uh, will change in line with patient performance. So um, the inertial sensors that we used uh, to monitor the movement of the participants were developed at ICOSH as well. Um, it's basically a device with an accelerometer and an, a gyroscope, um, a battery, 
uh, and with uh, Bluetooth low energy communication, uh, and that can charge wirelessly using inductive charging. Um, here you can see some of the first prototypes that we have developed to allow uh, the attachment of the sensors to, to the feet, or in this case, to, to the shoes. Um, we had as requirements that the sensor should be easy to wear, should be tightly secured uh, to avoid motion artifacts, um, be comfortable and fit different shoe styles. So uh, shoes with and without shoe laces, for instance. Um, so our final proposal combined um, a rigid structure to secure and, and protect the, the hardware components with a flexible material, uh, so an elastic band with, with Velcro um, for easy placement around the shoes. Um, the other device that we integrated in the system was the dynamometer. This one was developed by the University of Montreal. Um, it started as a metallic structure with a wire. Um, then they started printing them using 3D printers. Um, Yet the cables are, are still uh, required. Uh, they connect to, to a box that provides the, the Bluetooth uh, capabilities. Uh, the idea in the future is to include Bluetooth uh, directly in the device so that cables are not anymore necessary. Um, they produced several sizes of the dynamometer so that they could fit uh, more women. Um, the device measures force um, that are due to the contractions of the pelvic floor muscles. So inertial sensors and the dynamometers were used for the interaction with the game. So these are Bluetooth enabled devices and they connect via the browser. Uh, we developed a library for the detection and classification of the multidirectional steps based on signal processing, sensor fusion, machine learning, uh, using the inertial sensors on the feet. And we also analyzed the force measurements uh, sent by the dynamometer uh, to be able to detect the pelvic floor muscle contractions, in this case, using a, a threshold-based approach. The libraries were, were compiled as an event-driven li uh, library for JavaScript uh, to be used on the web. Um, an interesting thing about this is that the the communication with the Bluetooth devices and also the algorithms developed, uh, they allow data processing and uh, in real time and an interaction and feedback with the game also without any noticeable delay. Concerning gate analysis, um, the idea would be having a gate analysis solution using the same inertial sensors that were used to play the game, so uh, the ones placed on the feet, um, so that uh, the clinician could uh, conduct comprehensive assessment of gait metrics. Uh, so from the foot based inertial sensor data, we were able to extract all these measures that you see here, like stride duration, stride time variability, foot clearance, gait speed, etc., cetera, um, which allow full assessment of gait in this context of aging. The, the algorithm was developed using data from young adults that we also acquired at ICOS using our motion capture system as a reference. Uh, so for that, we had to put several optical markers on the shoes. Uh, and from the marker trajectories, we extracted several gate parameters for validation. Um, the algorithm including, included processing steps like the detection of zero velocity instance, the estimation of sensor and foot orientation, um, the estimation of foot strike position, uh, and the detection of events like the, the heel strike and toe off. We also have the, the opportunity to assess the performance of the algorithm against other solutions uh, in people with mobility impairment and urinary incontinence using as reference GateTap which is also a system using inertial sensors, and gate right, uh, which is um, a pressure-sensitive folkway. In general, we, we can say that the measured gate speed um, presents an high accuracy and precision and a very strong correlation with the reference systems. Um, and we also had high or very high correlation uh, for other gate metrics, including the temporal metrics, stride length, swing width, turning angles, 
um, which allow uh, the full assessment of gait in this context of aging. Um, also, gait analysis was implemented as a JavaScript module to be accessed through the web clinical portal. Here I present some of general conclusions of the phase one of the trials, which assessed the usability of the extra game. Um, so this phase was important to assess usability with the end users, so people with mobility impairment, cognitive impairment, and urinary incontinence. Um, and for that, we used um, a mixed methods approach uh, comprising the think aloud method, the system usability scale, and SME structured interviews. Um, in general, the, the Vital Exor game was seen as usable. Uh, participants of all the target groups uh, liked the new training approach um, in addition to their physical therapy. Um, they considered it as a new and motivating kind of training. And based on the feedback from the trials, we were able to introduce some improvements to the game that were incorporated for the second phase of the trials. Um, and three publications were, were produced as a result of these studies. So if you are curious about them, you can refer to them. Uh, regarding the second phase of the trials, um, this phase aimed to assess feasibility and intervention efficacy. Uh, so it was designed as a randomized controlled pilot trial uh, where we have um, an intervention group uh, that plays the game and we have a control group that continues their usual care. Uh, and the idea is to assess them in the beginning and after the intervention to evaluate if, if it was effective or not in comparison with the, the control group. Um, and as I said in the beginning, the trial is still ongoing uh, despite the six month extension and despite the official termination of the project um, because on one side we had all the COVID related uh, restrictions that caused several delays and on, on the other side, because Belgium and Canada managed to continue the trial. So for that reason, we don't yet have the final results of the trial, um, but so far um, the feedback that we have is that participants are happy um, and able to use the system and perform the training. Um, and so far no adverse events were registered. Okay, so here um, you can see a very short video of the developed solution to have a better idea of all, how all this works. Uh, so in the web portal, the, the clinician is able to conduct gait assessments. So uh, the clinician only needs to pair uh, the inertial sensors and then start the acquisition. The patient walks and while walking, the data is being sent to the device. In this case, it was a tablet. Uh, and in the end of the trial, the gate metrics are calculated. Concerning the game, as you can see, all interaction is made using the multidirectional steps. Uh, and the game is also accessed through the browser. Uh, in this case, the laptop is connected to a TV for a larger screen. Here we are back to the clinician portal where the clinician can have a, an overview of all the measured gate metrics and also of the, the several parameters of game performance that, that uh, are measured each time the, the player plays the game. So um, what's next? Uh, what are we doing now? And what do we aim to do in, in the future? So um, in the past, GATE was considered um, a pure automatic motor task, but we know that in reality, uh, gate is much more complex than this, and it requires inputs from higher cognitive areas. So as we get older, we, we experience changes in, in our motor performance and in our cognitive ability. And usually these changes are considered a normal part of the aging process, but cognitive aging may not always be considered normal. Um, so this uh, differentiating normal and abnormal cognitive decline is one of the central questions of current research um, as cognitive decline is considered a risk factor for the development of dementia. And this is also a topic that I'm exploring in my PhD. 
Um, the current evidence shows uh, that gait and cognition are interrelated in older adults. And for instance, some studies um, found that motor decline could be actually observed years before the clinical onset of dementia. And so it could be used as a predictor of dementia. And when walking becomes less automatic, um, the allocation of additional cognitive resources becomes necessary. So when cognitive decline starts to develop, um, the gait performance while performing a cognitive tasks, uh, like for instance, walking while talking or walking while paying attention to the traffic and to the traffic signs becomes more difficult. And this can be simulated on the lab. Uh, using dual task tests. Um, these tests require uh, the execution of a motor activity like walking while doing a cognitive task, for instance, uh, spelling words backwards, doing serial uh, subtractions or naming animals. These kind of tests, the dual task tests, are used in experimental psychology to study the interference between tasks. Um, and literature suggests that the cognitive motor interference observed in these tests can be a potential screening tool for the early stages of cognitive impairment. And this topic is currently being explored in the context of the project Smart Health for All. Um, it is a project funded by Agencia Nacional de Inovação with a total duration of 32 months. Um, it involves 24 partners, 11 companies, and 13 research and innovation entities. And the leader uh, of this project is Siemens Healthcare. Uh, so the project aims at promoting an ecosystem dedicated to R&D, production, commercialization, and dissemination of smart health technology. And it is focused on the prevention, diagnosis, monitoring, and treatment of chronic diseases that are linked to aging. And one of the topics that we are exploring in this project is precisely this, the development of novel biomarkers for cognitive impairment. Um, we know that uh, usually the, um, the treatments for, for dementia can only uh, stabilize or slow its progression. Uh, so the earlier someone is diagnosed, the sooner the treatment can start and the better maybe the outcomes. So um, nowadays, the, the gold standards that exist uh, for the detection of cognitive impairment are not suitable for community-wide screening uh, because the exams are expensive, some of them are invasive, um, and they are also time-consuming. Uh, so the detection of cognitive impairment in the primary care depends mostly on clinical suspicion, um, which is based on patient symptoms, but also on caregiver's concerns. So this, detect this detection is likely to be missed or delayed. Uh, so the lack of a definitive test and the diagnostic uncertainty that exists around this are some of the barriers to the diagnosis. And for this reason, we are currently about to start a trial um, on the screening of cognitive impairment using smartphones and inertial sensors. So the idea is to develop a tool that can be used by clinicians in the primary care for the fast and reliable screening of cognitive impairment. Um, the trial is being performed together with the Clinical Academic Center of Braga, uh, which is located at Hospital of Braga. The trial uh, will involve older adults with, with mild cognitive impairment, uh, older adults with subjective memory complaints, so complaints that are not uh, confirmed by the neuropsychological tests, and healthy older adults, so older adults without uh, mild cognitive impairments. Um, and we will assess gait using inertial sensors, cognition using cognitive tests, and the microphone uh, to record the, the speech. And we will also uh, assess finger tapping um, in a smartphone. We will also assess the dual task tests, so um, walking while performing the cognitive tasks and uh, doing the finger tapping while um, doing the, the cognitive task. Um, then we will rely on motion analysis, speech analysis, and machine learning to develop models for the detection of mild cognitive impairments. 
Um, the final goal is to develop novel biomarkers for uh, the early detection of cognitive impairments and improve uh, the screening in the community, uh, which are crucial goals to, to meet the challenges of aging. Okay, and that's it. I thank you for, for your attention and again for the opportunity to be here to present uh, our research. Thank you, Vanya. Well, very clear to understand what you are doing. Uh, and do you have an idea of where what is the age where this difficulty to do the dual tasks start to appear? How many years old? Uh, yeah, when we are more than 65 years old, for sure, but, yeah. but also before. So the, the interference, this dual task interference actually happens, I would say, in all ages. Uh, if we try to walk while doing a cognitive task, our performance will for sure change uh, in, in the, the gait or uh, in the cognitive task itself. Uh, so they interfere with each other. But in older adults uh, with, um, with cognitive problems, uh, this interference will be higher. Uh, so detecting when, when what, what is higher <laughs> and what can be considered um, Actually, a cognitive change is, is the challenge of these, these kind of approaches. Okay, okay, interesting. Uh, <clears throat> what is your expected results considering, considering the, that will be considered a success, uh, a success for your, your implementation? I saw that you have the, the, the gadget, you have the, the, the games. What will be considered as a, a success or not? What is it, the numbers of what will indicate that you you manage to, uh, to achieve what you wanted? Yes, uh, so it's not just uh, extracting the gate metrics. Uh, that's, it's important that they are extracted with, uh, with some precision, uh, but more than that, that they have the precision that is enough to later detect the cognitive impairments. This is the, my final goal. Uh, and to be considered successful, I would say that in the end, we would need to have a, a tool that can detect the cognitive impairment, at least with a higher sensibility and sensitivity uh, than the current tools that exist in, in the literature. For instance, mm -hmm. one of the tools that is um, mostly used to screen cognitive impairments uh, in the community is uh, a test called the MOCA, Montreal Cognitive Assessment Tool, um, which is like, a, questionnaire, a set of, of, um, of tests that the person needs to do. Uh, so my goal would be with, with gates and with dual tasking, trying to achieve better performance than these tools. And as these tools take uh, usually more than 10 minutes to administer, uh, doing a gate test is much more faster. So this would be an important goal mm -hmm. and also the, this kind of test, the Montreal Cognitive Assessment, they need to be administered by, by someone that is trained to do that. And the gate test can, can be done by, by anyone, so it would also be okay. a benefit. Okay, you also want to assess uh, the improvement of the, the metrics when they play the game? That would be also an important question, yes. Um, so within the game, we also measure lots of, of parameters. Um, and these parameters may also be uh, an indicator of, uh, of the performance uh, regarding cognition. Um, the thing is that um, these, these kind of games are designed uh, to act as an intervention. Uh, so we are expecting that with, within the game, we are improving uh, cognitive performance, but actually the game itself could uh, reveal some metrics that could be used uh, for the cognitive assessment. Uh, I, don't, uh, yeah, I, I don't expect to have um, the, all the data that I may need to, to fully work this topic within the, the VTAL, but it could be for sure a future topic to explore in another, maybe in another project in the future. But yes. especially because uh, people are playing um, cognitive games. So these are games that have a, a cognitive task. They are doing cognitive tasks uh, and solving them using movements. So 
in some sense, this is also kind of a dual task test, uh, combining movement with um, with the, the, the cognitive task. So could also be used for, for assessment. Yes. Oh, cool, cool. Because I'm, I'm thinking uh, what will be the future for this. And I remember that uh, when you, uh, there is a needs, you don't know, the Nintendo Wii. Yes. Mm -hmm. It has a, 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 a balance that you, you step up and you make an, an assessment of your balance. Mm -hmm. If you can skip in, 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 with a ball within a circle and so on. I think that there, there could be something similar to other, uh, elderly person or even for, for adults, not, yes. not young, young adults, but for more mature adults, something that they enjoy playing and yes, could help sure. them to first assess what are the, how is the decline happening and being a way for them to be active in preventing this decline. Yes, sure. Uh, the, the thing with the, these kind of platforms that exist um, and are sold to, to everyone, they are actually for maybe designed for a younger population. So yeah. they are not feeding uh, the, the, the senior population. So uh, when we not are si developing... Not scientifically validated, right? Yes, not scientifically validated. And also, maybe also the, the design of the game is also not uh, very easy for them to use because... Mm -hmm. Uh, it was designed for a younger population, and of course, the, let's say the intervention that is behind that, the exercises that are there designed are also not fitting uh, the purposes of uh, uh, um, uh, an older adult population. And that's why we we are taking these efforts to to develop something that is more uh, specific for for them. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, anyone in the in the audience? Do you want to make a um, question? If you want to raise your hand, and I enable you to talk, or type a question on on the chat, feel free. Carolina, yes. Hi. Well, first of all, congratulations. It's it seems like a fantastic uh, tool, and um, I had. A couple of questions. I, I believe that you answered already the first one, like what's the difference between uh, this proposal and the existing uh, tools. Uh, you mentioned Mocha. Um, Mocha is well known. Um, there's also the inter-eye assessment in home care, which includes cognitive um, measurements. And um, however, my, my second question is um, regarding um, how do you, of course, there's, there's all these partners uh, that you mentioned, and they're big partners, universities in Canada and Siemens Hilfeniers. And I'm pretty sure that um, they would all focus on making this uh, tool successful. Um, however, how do you envision um, your insertion in the market when there's all these other tools that have been there forever and usually clinicians are not very fond of new trends even though for example uh, remote healthcare, remote therapies are a thing that's here to stay after COVID. So how do you how do you portray those challenges and uh, and another important thing is how do you keep uh, the patients motivated to continue using your tool because uh, that is something that's trendy, that initially it's very uh, motivational, but how do you keep them going? Uh, unless it's a mandatory thing, it's usually something that you, you do for a while and then you stop doing it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your question. Uh, yes, the first thing is that this is a, a trend. Uh, and I, actually after COVID-19, uh, we are observing also a change in the, the paradigm of care. Um, I think that clinicians and um, the rehabilitation centers are um, giving more value to these kind of tools. Um, so having this possibility of, let's say, prescribing um, an intervention that the person can do at home um, could be a, a need uh, for them in the future. And it's an intervention that it's not just uh, prescribing, doing a set of exercises at home without guidance and without feedback. 
it's something that is also supposed to be uh, fun and entertain, entertaining. And this is uh, what we uh, what we, we expect to hopefully work as a motivation for uh, doing this continuously. Of course, our aim is not that the person will play the game forever. <laughs> that would, would require uh, maybe much more um, games uh, developed for them to, to have more, let's say, variability. Um, but for now, what, what we know from the trials is that people are very motivated. They, they really enjoy uh, playing games. They, they find it very, very fun, very entertaining. Um, of course, the trials that we designed for now, they are being cared, not, um, not at home, not in, in person's home, but in the, um, in the, the rehabilitation centers and being uh, for now supervised by, by someone, by a physiotherapist that is nearby, because we, we don't yet have these first results to be able to confidently put the system in their homes. Um, but in principle, this is what we expect uh, that will um, work as a, as a motivation for them. So it's a game, it's something that is supposed to be fun maybe in the future we could also implement some some um, multiplayer uh, components uh, like for them to to be able to challenge their neighbors or <laughs> or their partners something like this so these are all the kind of strategies that that we we could use uh, regarding the the commercialization uh, one one possibility and for reaching the market uh, one possibility is that rehabilitation centers um, are like buying the, the solution and then uh, renting them to the, um, to the patients. Uh, so for as long as the patients are doing rehabilitation, geriatric rehabilitation in, in a rehabilitation center, they can uh, rent uh, the system and use them, use it at home. Uh, and this can, this can be paid by, by the person itself or uh, by the, the, the secure uh, company, the, the insurance uh, that the, the person may have. I think that 20 years from now, we could have like an, <clears throat> an e-sports competition between elderly homes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Felipe, do you want to, to speak? Uh, yes, I was trying to activate also the camera, but for some reason Windows is not letting me to. It lets me try again. Uh, no, just audio. Sorry. <laughs> um, but can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Just to complement what Vanya was saying, I think this is really a trend. Although, for instance, one good example that you, we have here, well, we had maybe in particular with Sword Health, and it's a huge success, especially in the US. And I think it has to do a little bit with the model with paying. And in this case, I think they, they, they reach the ones that are willing to pay, which are HMOs in the US, and which will get more value from it. So they, they simply in the US, they have huge uh, remote, or they have a lot of remote areas. We have, uh, um, and with the Obamacare, they force a little bit that the treatment should be done uh, very precisely and to, to get concrete results from it. So, Without this, they will not be paid for this. So I think this product really gives, the Sword Health product give a really an answer, this, this one in the physiotherapy um, segment or market segment. Uh, and this is the same road, I would say, that uh, the, this, uh, this product more in the cognitive area needs still to, to be do, doing and still needs to have a, a kind of influencers, doctors doing a little bit of mentoring and uh, including this in their portfolio in order to include this in the market. But uh, I would say that's also a lot to do with paying for it in the end. Great. <clears throat> Thank you. Carolina, did you answer everything? Any other questions? No, thank you. Um, just wishing you the best of success and congratulations once again. Thank you, Carolina. Yeah. Thank you. Interesting in, in the future when the I think it's, it's also things about generations, right? The current generation that are in the 80s and 70s, they may not be that interested in video games, but in 20 years from now, 
uh, or, or 30, 30 years from now, those who are in the, the, the 60 and the, the 70, they will, will have the, they, they grew with video games in their life. So having a, a technology like that, that offers uh, the possibility of intervention and prevention and link it to, to entertainment is, is, a, is a game changer. No pun intended. <laughs> So, if anyone anyone else wants to make a comment or a question, feel free. And Vanya also and Felipe, if you want to, to mention everything else, anything else. No, thank you, <laughs> and thank you for inviting us to present. Yeah, thank you for for accepting. And thank you, advice. Vanya, for the nice presentation. <laughs> yeah, it's very nice, very nice place. <laughs> Clear to understand, very well placed. It was a comfort to, to watch. Yeah. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> if nothing else, I don't want to take your time. So, uh, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, if you want to talk with Vanya and Felipe, uh, I think you are registered on the on the matchmaking also, right? Uh, not no. sure. No. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to, you can share your, your yes. screen or yes. I, I can type here the. I can type from the email. Email. The email. <laughs> yeah. So, everyone, if you are interested to talk with them, send them straight uh, an email and get in touch. Um, and uh, that's all. Thank you. Have a great day. For those who are in the matchmaking, continue with your scheduling meetings. Okay. And we'll see you later with the webinar that will happen in, I think, in three hours. Okay. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank Bye. you all again. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Powering the innovation for active and healthy aging. 